first off, some big questions you have around this battery business, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So I think there were there was a really interesting product announcement last night in the Powerwall and then um, the larger utility and commercial systems. But there are some notable missing players in there. So you know we we saw a lot of preferred partnerships really across the value chain. Noticeably missing was Solar City, which is interesting because this is not the first foray into storage for Tesla. They've done it before with about 430 systems going through Solar City, and yet so they're saying they've done it quietly through Solar City. Um, yeah, to a certain extent, it was, a, okay. it was two different product trials over the past few years. So why is that important, though? Um, it's important because if you look at what happened with the solar industry, for example, you got really cheap hardware, re people who got really uh, good and fast at installing systems, and offered financing to the end customer. And right now, both of those last two pieces are missing. So we have cheap hardware from Tesla via Panasonic cells, right. and Tesla's really good at making the packs. But you can't just have a pack and install it in your house. You have to have the converters, you have to have someone to install it, and you have to have someone who really knows what they're doing when they're talking about working with so you, gonna, bringing so you, it So in your view, it might cost a lot more than just this $3,500 price tag. It then. certainly will. Okay. So if we look, yep. Okay, well, let me, I just want to bring Lou into the conversation, though, Lou, because you said, uh, I believe that this is a solution that has no problem. Is that right? Uh, yeah. Uh, specifically regarding uh, residential, I think that that's correct. Okay, what do you mean? Explain. Well, so uh, for the vast majority of us, the grid's pretty reliable and it's really cheap. And so the economic value to a customer or how it improves your daily life of having storage is really just not there. I think that in uh, Connecticut, for example, one of my partners is always complaining about losing power yeah. in snowstorms and uh, a, a several hour battery storage system wouldn't help. He, did, he wouldn't have put any power into it in the wintertime and it wouldn't last long enough to ride through. So for most people, this is not actually an issue. It's a cool technology, but it's not really uh, money saving or problem solving. Wait, okay, but, but I don't want to underplay the, the benefit of, uh, of, of, of using this when you have a blackout or a brownout, right, because of, uh, of snowstorms. Uh, but also, let's say more and more homes, though, Lou, uh, become solar powered or wind powered. Uh, isn't that going to create that demand for this kind of storage? Well, it depends on how we progress our utilities. If you look at the change in the utilities in the last couple of years, we've quietly changed over much more coal to natural gas than the, than the uh, renewables have impacted. And the utilities response to that has been very quiet and, and homeowners haven't been involved at all. It's not at all clear that the utilities need the homeowners to play along and the rate structures in most places don't encourage them to. California is trying to encourage this, and and there may be there may be a market there, but it's not clear it's not clear who the customer will be and and why they're buying these things. Okay, so that's on the residential side, but Dean, I mean, is there a bigger business on the commercial side? And you explain that to us. Yeah, I mean, I think just taking one step back, he did hit on a few key points there. Right now, the business models are really not well understood for storage. Um, but on the residential and utility side, we are seeing some initial applications that are driving. Um, the product demand. So one example could be demand management. So let's say you're a commercial facility and this is very geographically limited. You can reduce the amount every month that you're going from a peak perspective. And that's something that Elon touched upon last night is mm -hmm. that we build the electric grid to have to meet our hottest day of the year, yeah. our 3 p.m. you know July day. Um, that is really an inefficient system, and so batteries have a way, particularly from a distributed perspective, going as small as the power wall and as large as you know the gigawatt hour storage that Elon was that talking about. about. Yeah, yeah, um, and that that has the opportunity to actually reduce the amount of investment we have in the electric grid overall to build uh, more flexibly to a certain extent. Okay, so getting a, l a little bit away in the time that we have, away from the actual technology, because I think we could talk about this and decipher like what you know what it, what's the business model, where's it going to where's it going to be most beneficial. Um, what about for the company itself? I mean, how big of a deal? I mean, Lou, you weigh, on the, weigh in on this. How big of a deal could this be for Tesla? So even if there's fairly small penetration in the storage market, if they don't sell very many uh, in terms of changing the grid, I think that it could be quite significant for the company. And I think that one of the reasons that they're doing this is that the gigafactory that's hypothesized doesn't really benefit them. They don't get the money savings unless they use the factory as much as possible. And so being able to make sure that they can crank out batteries, whether they're for cars or for something else, I think will help drive their costs down. So I think the intention here is really to make sure that they're using the new factory they're going to build. 